people are crazy about this winter sporting event. It was created in Japan and it's called Ekiden. Ekiden is a long distance relay race. Instead of a baton, a sash is handed from one runner to the next. A team might have several members or even dozens depending on the type of event. And the distances they cover range from dozens of kilometers to hundreds. You can't let the team down. Every runner feels duty bound to pass the sash on to the next teammate. This mission is a recipe for a gripping drama that Japanese spectators love. Ekiden was born about 100 years ago. Many runners who went on to global fame got their start in this event. The sports inventor was a marathon runner who was haunted by a humiliating defeat at the Olympic Games. That experience drove him to create an event that could produce world-class runners. Young athletes seek to honor their high school by competing at the national championships. There is even one gruelling Ekiden race that goes up and down the slopes of Mount Fuji. In March 2011, northeastern Japan suffered an unprecedented disaster. Charity Ekiden races have been held to raise relief funds. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we look at Ekiden a unique athletic event that reveals what makes the Japanese tick. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. This is the stadium of Nippon Sports Science University where you can see the Ekiden team going through their paces on their early morning practice. Ekiden is a track and field event which, although you won't see it at the Olympics, is extremely popular here in Japan. And this lies at the heart of Ekiden. In Japanese, it's known as Taski, which just means a sash, but that sash is highly symbolic in the world of Ekiden. Let me just put mine on. Let's start off with a look at what Ekiden is all about. The All Japan High School Ekiden Championships are held every December. In fact, during winter in Japan, there are Ekiden events just about every week. Many are broadcast live on television. Ekiden is a fixture on the winter sporting calendar. The most popular of all is the Hakone Ekiden. Ekiden teams from universities in the regions around Tokyo compete. 2012 was the 88th running of this event. Held on January the 2nd and 3rd each year, it's a national institution. The All Japan Corporate Team Ekiden Championships are another annual highlight. Teams of corporate athletes wear the sash and battle to do their companies proud. Fellow employees line the streets to cheer them on. Only in Japan do you see a race like this. Then there are the All Japan Interprefectural Ekiden Championships, bringing together fiercely proud teams of runners from each of Japan's 47 prefectures and their local fans. Here is yet another Ekiden event, and this one involves 51 runners per team. Called Grand Tour Kyushu, it goes through all the prefectures of Kyushu, Japan's main island in the southwest. A total of 739 kilometers, divided into 51 stages, run over eight days. It's the longest Ekiden in Japan. The most demanding of all Ekiden events is the Mount Fuji Ekiden. Teams of six run from the foot of Mount Fuji to the summit and back down again. 47 kilometers with an elevation change of 3,199 meters. The runner on each team who reaches the summit gets the sash stamped at the Shinto shrine there, then goes back the way he came. Usually a climb up Mount Fuji and back takes a couple of days, but an Ekiden team does the round trip in just over four hours. 
さあ一気に選手の手前5メーターから選手が現れた3番手、合式系安心助けが出てきた助けが出てきた助けが出てきた助けが出てきた助けが出てきた助けが Why are Japanese people so passionate about Ikida? It's an easy sport to love. That's why everyone loves it. It's all about teamwork, and that's what's so great about it. That kind of unity, that's the Japanese spirit, I think. If even one person on the team fails to complete his or her section of the race, the entire team is disqualified. You take the sash from the runner before you, complete your leg, and then hand the sash on to the next runner. That is your mission. The sash carries ideas of solidarity and duty. It's this aspect of the sport that appeals to the Japanese. The term Ekiden actually includes a number of different types of race, and the length of each leg and the number of legs varies from event to event. And that means that you can have no common records, as opposed to other track and field events like the 100 meters, for example, where you'll have one common world record time that everybody competes against as a standard. So let's have a talk to some of these runners. Good morning. Good day. Uh, can you tell me that there's a lot of different track and field events? Why did you choose Ekiden in particular? When I was in junior high school, I played baseball. Of course, teamwork is essential in baseball and in Ekiden too. You can't get to the top without great teamwork. I chose Ekiden because I found the symbolic meaning of the sash very appealing. You're on your own when you're running, but you are a part of the team, and it is a team sport. And how you live your life, your attitude, that really affects your running. If your personal life is all messy, then your time won't improve. So I practice every day, all the time. And what's your ultimate goal in Ekiden? Ultimately, to win the Hakone Ekiden. Thank you very much. So let's go back and take a look at the history of Ekiden, and in particular the Hakone Ekiden, which is so central to the history of this sport. The word Ekiden has a long history in the Japanese language. You can even find it in the 8th century chronicle, Nihon Shoki. Originally, it referred to a system for delivering important information using a horse relay. As a track and field event, Ekiden started in 1917, when an event called Ekiden Race of the 53 Stations of the Tokaido was held. Three years later, the Hakone Ekiden was born. The man behind it was Shizo Kanaguri. At the 1912 Stockholm Olympics, Kanaguri was Japan's first Olympian. He competed in the marathon, but passed out during the race and was disqualified. It was a harsh lesson in how far Japanese long-distance running still had to go. Kanaguri said, we must train runners who can compete with the world. For the Japanese to reach that level, we need a lot of runners helping each other and spurring each other on. He made up his mind to create a relay race for university students. And so in 1920, the Hakone Ekiden began. Over two days and 10 legs, it covered 217.9 kilometers from Otemachi in Tokyo to Lake Ashinoko in Hakone. The route to Hakone includes steep slopes up and down, so simply having fast runners would not be enough for victory. The key was finding specialists for uphill or downhill segments. Each leg was approximately 20 kilometers, and the strategies and unexpected events that unfolded over these long distances made for drama that captured the Japanese public's imagination. 
World-class runners emerge from the Hakone Yakiden. Akio Osami of Nihon University ran in the 1964 Hakone Yakiden. He went on to represent Japan in the marathon in three Olympics, the first being the 1968 Mexico City Games. But the greatest hero to emerge from the Hakone Ekiden was Toshihiko Seko of Waseda University. Seko ran the Hakone Ekiden four years in a row, beginning in 1976, and was also a successful marathon runner while still a university student. He represented Japan at the Los Angeles and Seoul Olympic Games. <laughs> Hiromi Taniguchi of Nippon Sports Science University gave himself a solid foundation by running the extremely demanding, steeply downhill sixth leg of the Hakone Ekiden three years in a row from 1981. In 1991, he won a marathon gold medal at the World Championships in Athletics, held in Tokyo. Finally, Japanese runners were good enough to compete at the highest level. Shizuo Kanaguri dreamed that one day, Ekiden athletes would be among the world's top long-distance runners. At last, his dream was coming true. We've come to Ashinoko, which is a lake in Hakone, and is the halfway point in the Hakone Ekiden. It's a beautiful day today, and you can see Mount Fuji over there in the distance. This hill is the highlight of the first half of the race. A couple of hundred meters or so. Well, <laughs> this hill is the highlight of the first half of the race. A hundred meters, a couple of hundred meters, okay, but this goes on and on and on. Even in a car, it seems like a long way. It must be something like 15 kilometers of this hill. And at my age, it's certainly no joke. And this Obolski thing here marks the finish line for the first half of the Hakone Ekiden. The race starts at 8 o'clock in the morning at Otemachi in central Tokyo, finishes five and a half hours later, having covered 110 kilometers. The whole race is broadcast live in its entirety, and millions of Japanese people watch it every year glued to their televisions over the New Year's holiday. Okay, next, let's follow the story of some high school students who dream of one day running in the Hakone Ekiden. The All Japan High School Ekiden Championships are held in Kyoto every December. High schools in all 47 prefectures that win qualifiers can take part in the race. Nishiwaki Technical High School in Kyogo Prefecture has won the competition a record eight times and is a perennial contender for the title. Winter is Ekiden season and the team is training hard. But 40 years ago, Nishiwaki Technical High School's team was weak, small, and on the verge of being shut down. This is Nishiwaki City, which was once a major textile center. Nishiwaki Technical High School was founded to train skilled workers in the production of traditional local textiles. In the 1970s, this industry went into decline, and the school's graduates found themselves with dismal job prospects. The students felt empty and at a loss. Their morale was badly damaged. Then a physical education teacher became coach of the track and field team. He decided that Ekiden would be a good way to restore their sense of pride. His name was Koji Watanabe, and he set his team's sights on reaching the All Japan High School Ekiden Championships. At that time, the team had only 12 members. 
First of all, Watanabe instructed them to run three kilometers. He saw that after two kilometers, many runners slumped and lost their form. He had them flip backwards on a bar, but one after another they failed. They lacked upper body strength. So Watanabe decided to put torso and arm strength first. The runners did 20 pull-ups a day, and they had to hold the 20th pull-up for a minute and 20 seconds. That was pretty tough. To build endurance and develop lower body strength, he had the team keep the sports ground in perfect condition. In 1975, Osamu Fuji joined the team. He had never run more than 1,500 meters at junior high school. At the start of training, as a warm-up, Watanabe had the whole team run 4,000 meters. Fuji thought he would never keep up. But as he ran alongside the older boys and they passed 2,000 meters, he was amazed to find himself still in the pack. Then he realized that the older boys were actually running in a formation around him. When he slowed down, the older boys slowed down too. This was all planned by Watanabe. His top priority was to give Fuji a sense of accomplishment, to make him believe that he could do it if he tried. That day, Fuji successfully ran 4,000 meters for the first time. The training started to pay off. The runners were developing lean, muscular upper bodies. They were starting to use their arms powerfully and effectively. They could run 1,000 meters 20 times a day. Fuji gradually adapted to the training. Two years after joining the team, he had become its star. Watanabe began to feel confident. There was no more wilting from exhaustion. The Hyogo Prefecture qualifier for the 1977 All Japan High School Ekiden Championships. On the morning of the event, Watanabe held up a sash and said, Make this sash the pride of Nishiwaki Technical High School. Fuji ran the first leg and handed over the sash as a member of the leading pack. The second and third leg runners also ran their hearts out, carrying the sash, this embodiment of their pride. Just over two hours after the start of the race, the crowd was waiting expectantly at the finish line. And the first runner to appear was the anchor of Nishiwaki Tenu. They finished first in a time of 2 hours, 12 minutes and 9 seconds, a new Hyogo Prefecture record. Nishiwaki Technical advanced to the All Japan High School Ekiden Championships. In 1982, five years after first making it to the big event, Nishiwaki Technical won their first national title. It was their third appearance in the championships. The city of Nishiwaki threw a celebration for them. The high school's once weak track team had become the pride of the community. Today, Nishiwaki Technical's team continue their tradition of hard training. Kowei Adachi once trained under Watanabe. Now he's coaching the team. 
With the Ekidem competition approaching, Adachi instructs the runners to do special training. They practice handing on the sash. The runner before you may be in the lead or, for some reason, way behind. It doesn't matter. The key thing is just to stay calm. You get the sash from the previous runner. You pass it to the next runner. And you have to stay calm throughout the process. That's the discipline we need to cultivate. <laughs> the point of practicing handing over the sash again and again is not to improve the race time. Rather, the idea is that at the moment the sash is handed over, the moment a new leg begins, the new runner will stay calm. This drill also emphasizes the importance of teamwork. This is the cafeteria of the dorm where the members of the Ekiden team live. The Japanese writing on the wall says, Fudo Shin, dauntless. This sums up the team's attitude towards Ekiden. Fudo Shin means a sense of calm that is impervious to whatever chaos may be going on around you. And it reflects a Japanese philosophy that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with sport. And the sash practice is less about technique than a method of boosting team unity. And it's indicative of one of the key elements of Japanese culture. And this is the Hakone Ekiden Museum. You'll see all these colorful banners here, which are the flags of the various universities that participate in the race. And these are hung along the course to spur on the runners. Let's go in and take a look. This place is full of display panels that tell you about the history of the Hakone Ekiden, and they also have exhibits with the uniforms and sashes of the various universities. This is the uniform and sash of Nippon Sports Science University, which we visited earlier on. This year marks their 64th consecutive participation in the Hakone Ekiden, and that means every year since they first took part, and they've won the race nine times in all. And here we have the uniform of Waseda University, which regularly features among the top several universities in the race and has won it 13 times so far. And I have with me Mr. Kenji Kawaguchi, who is the assistant curator of this museum. Kawaguchi-san, I'm quite surprised that there's a whole museum dedicated to Ekiden. Uh, I suppose it's indicative that it's that much a part of Japanese culture now. Ekiden is drama without a script. Good runners don't always perform well in the race. Sometimes the best runners are outperformed by those who are not as good. That actually happens a lot. You find relay races all over the world, and I think they're always popular as well. What is it that makes the Ekiden special for the spectator? It's all about the sash. Sure, it's just a piece of cloth, but used in this manner, it represents the dreams of the runners and of their family members and friends and everybody. So, when you're watching a race on television, you think about the sash and what it means, and you can't help but get emotional. Because of their emotional draw, Ikiden races are a great way to forge a bond with society, and charity events are one good example of that. By holding an Ikiden, you bring together large numbers of people, offering an excellent opportunity for fundraising. Twelve years ago, the island of Miyakejima, 180 kilometers south of central Tokyo, suffered a major volcanic eruption. Lava flowed and toxic gases poured out, forcing all the residents to leave. 
Roughly 3,000 people spent four years and five months as evacuees on the mainland. Running enthusiasts from Tokyo and the surrounding region decided to put on a charity ekiden to raise money for the evacuees. Famous athletes helped to organize the race. They signed sportswear and other items and donated the proceeds from sales. This is called Ekiden for Life, an annual charity Ekiden event that supports the battle against cancer. Sporting yellow flags, doctors and other medical professionals, as well as cancer survivors, run to raise money for cancer research. The yellow flags take the place of the usual sashes. They represent hope for life. The flags really stand out. We want as many people as possible to know about us. The sense of being in this together makes us all very happy. In March 2011, a massive earthquake and tsunami struck northeastern Japan. Many survivors are still unable to go home. In response, people around Japan have organized charity Ekiden races to raise money for the recovery efforts. In the same way that a sash is handed from runner to runner, the determination to battle past tragedy is passed from person to person. Ikiden got its start as a way to produce world-class runners in Japan. Almost a century on, this relay race has gone beyond those original goals and become part of the fabric of Japanese culture. And whether they're representing a school, a local area or a company, Japanese Ekiden runners compete not just for themselves, but as part of a broader community. And to that extent, you could say that Ekiden is kind of a microcosm of Japanese society. I'll see you again next time. Did you know that dry cell batteries were invented in Japan? Next time we reflect on Japan's manufacturing prowess through the history of batteries, including the lithium-ion batteries used in mobile phones.